everyone, welcome back to Risa Does Makeup. If this is your first time here, my name is Risa, and today I'm going to be comparing four of Sephora's top rated concealers. I am going to be focusing specifically on under eyes. I don't typically use concealers on my face because I get enough coverage I find using a medium to full coverage foundation. That's what I prefer. So again, I'm focusing mainly, well only, on the under eye area. I went on Sephora's website and I filtered for the top rated concealer. They give you the option to filter top rated. So these are four of them that came up first. Although when I did the rankings, when I did the search on different devices, it was interesting because different ones came up. I mean, these were all there, but the first ones to come up were different. It was a little strange, but I also wanted to use concealers that I haven't talked about a lot in the past before, so I didn't choose the NARS Radiant, and a lot of people love to make comparisons to a very popular concealer called Tarte Shape Tape that is actually not available at Sephora, but I have done a comparison video that I can link for you between the NARS Radiant Creamy and the Tarte Shape Tape. But for the purposes of today's video, I am going to be talking about four that are available at Sephora that I really haven't talked about much at all on my channel, probably because two out of the four are relatively new to me. I've only had them for one of them I've had for a couple weeks and the other one I bought specifically to do this video because I had never tried it and I was um, interested in, you know, the reviews were so great. So what you're going to see in this video is three different days, three different battles as I am going to call them. I'm not sure if I'm going to, if I'm going to title this video Concealer Battle. I haven't come up with a title yet, but the first day you're going to see the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Concealer go up against the YSL All Hours Concealer. And then the second day, I did the Kevin O'Quan Etherealist Concealer against the Guerlain Multi-Perfecting Concealer, Hydrating and Blurring Effect. So this was day two. And then on day three, you will see the winner of each of those battles against each other. I recorded each day's application and check-in and end of the day results on my iPhone because I felt like it gives, well, I thought it gave the clearest view of the concealers for you. But unfortunately, in watching some of it back and editing some of it already, I feel like maybe it wasn't the best vis visualization or depiction of what was happening um, during the application and during check-ins. It's just so hard to capture on video something totally realistic when you're trying, you know, you're working with studio lights and even with natural light. Just, you, it can definitely, change the appearance of something. So you're kind of going to have to take my word for it when I describe to you what I'm seeing and my thoughts on each individual concealer. You're also going to be seeing me in a different light, literally, from this one. Because, I, as I said, I recorded on the iPhone, but you're gonna see me in all states of bad hair, shiny skin, beginning of the day, end of day, filming, not filming, Actually, day one was Memorial Day and I was just a hot mess. So without further ado, let's get to the battle of Sephora's top rated concealers. So today's competition is going to be between the two concealers that were the first to pop up when I did a search on Sephora's website. And the first two that I saw were the Yves Saint Laurent All Hours, and the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Ultra Longwear Concealer. So those are gonna be the two I'm going to start this competition using. So I will be placing the All Hours Concealer on my left side and the Flawless Fusion on my right. They both have doe foot applicators, so I'll be applying them the exact same way, blending them out with my fingers, and then I'll be setting all the concealers with my Laura Mercier Ultra Brightening Powder. So let's start with the all hours and I'm going to apply it like I always do, which is right on the side of my nose where it's very, very dark. And then into this hollow where it's also very, very dark. And then I bring it 
up to the corner of my eye. And I think I already said this, but I'm gonna be blending it out with my finger. Believe it or not, there was a time before beauty blenders that makeup artists like myself, we would always use our fingers. And I actually really like blending out my concealer using just my fingers because now that I'm older and I have a lot more fine lines and dryness under there, I find that the heat from my fingers, my body heat really works the product in well. And I'm not diffusing any of the coverage by using that damp beauty blender, which does have a tendency to dilute pigment a little bit. So I just press that in and this is a beautiful texture. I love the non-sticky texture of this. It glides out so easily. It is it is spreadable and highly pigmented, but it's not so pigmented, whereas you just use a tiny dot and you've just automatically gotten way too much. That's how I feel sometimes with the shape tape, especially when I watch other YouTubers use it. They put on so much and I feel like if I put on that much, I could probably cover my whole face with it. I feel like I got some nice coverage from this. I'm just really, really dark in this area, like a lot of us are. Now using the Laura Mercier, doing the same thing on this side. Going out to the outer corner of my eye. This one is a little bit creamier of a texture and it's definitely more uh, spreadable than the all hours. Like this one, I feel like I have enough product to kind of cover a bigger area if needed. Almost like I used too much on this side. Definitely a creamier, creamier, tackier consistency. Similar coverage though. I think it looks less matte. I think the all hours looks more matte, but that's not surprising since I just said this one is creamier. Okay, so I'm gonna let that sit for a minute and then I'm gonna feel the consistency after a couple minutes to let you know if it's still tacky or if there's a differences in the way, if there's a difference in the way they feel before I set it. So I've waited about three minutes and now when I touch this one, it feels dry and smooth. Not dry as in drying, it just doesn't feel tacky. It feels like it has set. Whereas this one, I can still feel a little bit of the stickiness, but it's not uncomfortable. It doesn't feel bad. Um, and looking at them up close, neither one of them, you know, we all, I think we all have these little lines right under here. And I'm just blending that out. It really hasn't settled into that line, but we'll see how it goes throughout the day. So now I'm going to set with the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening. I'm just going to tap a little bit into the lid and set that area. Okay, it has been about five or six hours since I applied the concealer. And I would have to say that both sides are looking pretty good. I have taken some photos and looked in some different mirrors around my house trying to see if I could tell a difference. And I have to be honest, they, they both look as good as they did when I first applied them. They haven't gotten, neither one has gotten cakey. Neither one has made my under eyes look drier or settled into lines. The brightness is still there. I took a photo and I tried to zoom in and see if I could notice any difference. And this eye looked slightly brighter, the all hours side, but um, yeah, as of right now, I think they're equal. So we'll see how they look in another six hours or so. So it has now been about 13 hours since I applied the concealer. Obviously I can't show you in natural light anymore because the sun has gone down. And I went and I looked in my vanity mirror and I went to the magnified side and I looked as close as I possibly could to see if there were any differences at all in these two concealers. And I just have to say that there is a reason that both of these have such good reviews because they they are both excellent, excellent concealers. I wanted to see why, I wanted to compare the colors side by side because I did feel throughout the day and even looking closely in my magnifying mirror, I did feel like this side that had the all, has the all hours had, seemed to be a little bit brighter. But when I compared the two side by side, I noticed that's because it's lighter and it is less peachy. So this right here, this is the All Hours in shade number two. This is the Laura Mercier in shade 2C. So as you can see, it's not as light as the All Hours. 
and it has a little bit more yellow, whereas this has a little bit more pink. I'm not sure why I purchased the 2C. I think I might have asked for the 2N and the sales associate gave me the 2C and Nordstrom. I'm not quite sure because I usually go for neutral or warm in my concealer because I like it to have a little bit more yellow or peach versus pink or beige. So this I think is where the brightness is coming from. It's just that it's a little bit lighter in general. The coverage has remained excellent for both of them. It still looks pretty much like it did when I applied it. I'm noticing now, I didn't notice it any other time I checked, but now I think it just could be that I'm just tired now. Um, a little bit more emphasis on these lines right under the eye, but I think they both are great. So I wasn't quite sure how I was gonna pick a winner being that they're both so good, but then I compared price and the amount you get for the price. So on that alone, I'm gonna to have to choose Laura Mercier. So whoever wins the battle between the Guerlain and the Kevin O'Quan will go up against the Laura Mercier. So stay tuned. All right, it's day two of the concealer battles. I'm filming another video today, which is the reason why I'm a little bit more put together or dolled up than I was yesterday, but Anyway, today I am going to be using the Kevin O'Quan Etherealist Concealer. This is in shade light. And then this is the, oh, did I show it? I don't think I showed it. This is the Kevin O'Quan. And then this is the Guerlain Multi Perfecting Concealer in the shade 01 Light Warm. So I'm going to put the Kevin O'Quan on this side and then the, which is my left side, and then the Guerlain on my right side. And I did this at the end of the day yesterday, but I'm gonna do it at the beginning this time, um, show you the colors. So this is the Kevin O'Quan, which has a doe foot applicator, like the two concealers yesterday. This is the shade Light One, so that is the shade. And then this is the Guerlain Light Warm. And so this is the Light Warm in the Guerlain. You can see that this one is a little bit peachier, a little bit darker. This one's a little bit lighter and more yellow. We're gonna do the same thing we did yesterday, which is apply it to the inner corners down here and covering all of this beautiful darkness right here. And this is a similar consistency, I would say, more to the after hours, no, after hours, all hours. It's not as sticky as the Laura Mercier. And I do like the brightening effect this one gives. This one covers really, really well, doesn't settle into any lines, really brightens up the eye area. Now this girl on I've actually only had for a couple of days. I decided to do this video and I needed one more that was in the top was top rated that I didn't own that I just wanted to try to throw into here to throw in this video. And the reviews for this one were amazing, especially women that were, you know, over 40, more mature. They were writing reviews saying that it was great if you have fine lines under the eyes or a lot of dryness. So I purchased this, I didn't actually purchase it from Sephora, I purchased it from the, no wait, I did purchase it from Sephora, but I first went to the Guerlain Boutique and I spoke to the makeup artist there who is clearly very well trained on Guerlain, that's all he sells, and he told me that you don't put this one on like you put on the others, you wanna do this one in thin, you wanna apply this one in thin layers, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to, I put a little bit on my finger and I'm patting it in. And this one is definitely a lighter consistency. So I could see why he said you had to build up the coverage because you don't get a ton of coverage right off the bat. I mean, it's, it's good. It's definitely good coverage, but it's not quite as blendable as the Kevin O'Quan. And I'm not sure how I feel about the way this one is looking. It looks a little bit drier, I think. This is not one of those concealers, like I mentioned yesterday, that you know a little bit goes a long way, where I could continue to blend out in other parts of my face like I can do with some other concealers that are really, really 
concentrated, highly concentrated, this one is not. All right, now like we did yesterday, I'm going to set them both with the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder. All right, I'll check in with you guys again in a few hours. All right, it is the end of day two. These concealers have been on for 14 hours. I am so exhausted. Clearly my makeup needs to come off. It's super shiny. Um, I did not do a middle of the day check-in just because it was the same as yesterday. There really wasn't much to say after about five, six hours. They both looked really good. Now, looking at them at this point, I will say right off the bat, the first thing I noticed was that neither of these look as good as the two concealers yesterday looked at the same point. The Laura Mercier and the YSL both looked better, I feel, than this does. I don't think these look bad, but I just think those both looked better. This one, the Guerlain side, and I don't know if you can tell in this camera, but it's definitely broken up a little bit and it looks a little drier. So of these two, I'm gonna go with the Kevin O'Quan. So that means that tomorrow I'm going to put the Kevin O'Quan up against the Laura Mercier and see how that goes. I don't have high hopes to find any big differences or any clear winner. I guess I should have thought of that before I did this video that when you take for top rated products, you most likely are gonna have a hard time choosing the best one. So we'll see. I mean, it's just interesting for me even to just to do this for myself and just see what each day brings. So here is one last look. All right, it's the last day of testing. I know I look a little bit tanner than I have in the past couple of days because I did self tan last night. And now uh, we are going to test out our winners. We're gonna test out the Kevin O'Quan from day two, the winner from day two, and the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion, which was the winner from day one. I am going to be putting the Kevin O'Quan on this eye today and the Laura Mercier on this eye. So let's start with the Laura. And I will show you the differences in these two colors, swatches in a minute. So same application as always and blending it out with my finger. This definitely looks a little light now with my tan. But actually, I think it looks better than it did. It gives me a little bit more of a brightening effect. So if your skin's a little bit darker than mine, if this is your skin tone, you might, and you like a brightening effect, this 2C might be a good choice. So now we have the Kevin O'Quan going in on this side. And with these two concealers, they both have very similar blendability. So I used about the same amount on both sides. Whereas if you remember with the Guerlain, I had to go in a couple times to build up the coverage and to blend it out to this point. Oops, I took a little bit of my eyeshadow off here. I just looked really closely in my magnifying mirror and this side, I can definitely see the yellow a little bit more. And the Laura Mercier has a tad more coverage, I think. And hmm, trying to see if there's anything else that I can see besides the fact that at least in the looking at this now, maybe in editing it won't look so bright, but this looks pretty bad. It looks pretty light. So let's do swatches of the two colors. Lighter and more yellow is the Kevin O'Quan, and peachier and a little darker is the Laura Mercier. Okay, it's been about six hours since I applied the concealer. Can you tell which side is which? Because I sure can't. I mean, I know which side is which, but they both look the same as I suspected. And even the brighter Kevin O'Quan side, the lighter side, seems to not be as noticeable as it was in you know the lighting downstairs. So I, even, I went to Ulta and I looked in the mirrors there and I didn't see much of a difference either. <laughs> So this was really, really hard. So I'll check in with you guys at the end of the night and see if anything's different. So we've come to the end of day three. It's been about 13 hours since I applied these concealers. And I have to say that aside from the color, they both held up very similarly. At this point, they look much like they did when they were applied. They've lost a little bit of coverage, both of them have. There hasn't been much 
uh, dryness. They don't look like either one, neither one looks like they have started cracking. I'm really impressed with both of them. And I'm hope, hoping that you can get a decent look at what's going on here and you can see what I mean by the fact that they don't look that much different. All right, I am exhausted, so I am just gonna go to bed. Tomorrow I will film my final thoughts, how I feel this whole experiment went. I'm going to rank the concealers for you in order of my favorites, which one is my favorite, my first, second, third, fourth. So stay tuned for that. Okay, now it is time for my final thoughts on this entire experiment, how I feel it went, was it even worth it to do? And even though I feel like all of these are really good concealers, definitely worth their ratings, I do have my personal preferences and that would be that my favorites would be a tie between the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion and the Yves Saint Laurent All Hours. If price were no object, if I were just going to buy a really good concealer, these would be the two, or somebody asked me what would be a great under eye concealer for someone with a similar under eye area to mine where it's dark but not crazy dark, a little bit more mature skin, some fine lines. I would recommend these two right off the bat. Now, I don't feel like this 2C is the best color for me, so, be careful when choosing because that really can make a difference in how a concealer looks throughout the entire day. Sometimes they oxidize. I felt like this one did oxidize a little bit and made me a little bit more peachy than I prefer. So I would probably go look into a different shade of this even for myself. And if you like a more emollient concealer, this would be my top pick. Then the third place would be the Kevin O'Quan. I really really like this i think it's a great overall concealer and especially for those of you who are looking for something cruelty free kevin o'quan is cruelty free and then my fourth place winner would be the guerlain i haven't used this one as long as the other so maybe i haven't given it a good enough chance but i just felt like that it was more time consuming to get the coverage that i could get with just one go around of either of these and being that it's kind of pricey and a little bit does not go a long way, you're gonna go through this a lot faster than you're gonna go through any of these others. So my ranking would be Laura Mercier one, All Hours two, Kevin O'Quan three, and the um, Guerlain four. All right, so was this video pointless to do? I don't think so, because I'm pretty sure a lot of you are like me, where I'm always, trying to see if there's anything better out there. Even if I love a product, sometimes I will read reviews on Sephora or I'll hear about it on YouTube and I'll think to myself, maybe that one's better. Maybe there's actually better than what I'm currently using. So you end up buying more and trying different things. And with this video, I feel like it might take some of that pressure off if you have been looking at these other concealers and wondering does one work better than the other? It's The differences were so minor in my opinion. I know this isn't going to stop a true makeup junkie from running to Sephora and purchasing another concealer the next time they see a great review, a bunch of great reviews. Um, that's not what this is about. This is, <laughs> this is not for the true makeup junkie who's still gonna buy regardless of what the outcome of this video was. This is for those of you who really are trying to be really careful with your money, only want to buy really quality, well, good performing products. So I really am hoping that this video did help some of you. So yeah, we have come to the end and I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and that notification bell and become part of the Risa Does Makeup family. You can also find me on Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, and Twitter. Everything is all under the same name of Risa Does Makeup. Thank you again for watching and I will see you in my next video.